meet the legal definition of a burnout. Well, another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. We should start calling this Stars of SEMA because we've done some fascinating SEMA cars. We were there a few months ago. I might remember Dominic. He was here with his uh, white pickup that he kind of did himself and he got invited to SEMA. That was one guy. And then you have something like this, just an all out effort by uh, <laughs> just an amazing group of guys uh, up in Wisconsin. Uh, this is a 1970 uh, Dodge uh, Charger. I keep saying Challenger because I have a Challenger with Dodge Charger. Uh, heavily modified? I would say so, but it still looks like a Charger. That's what I like. Let's meet the designer first, and then we'll meet uh, uh, the, the build as well. Sean Smith, come on in. Sean, how are you? Good. How are you? Pretty Pleasure good. to meet you. Speed yeah. Car is the name of your company, right? That's correct, yes. You guys are up there. The Ring Brothers, are they near you? There are all these kind of yeah. interesting guys building stuff in Wisconsin lately. Yeah. Yeah, nicely done. Okay, so what do we have here? It's a 1970 a Dodge Charger. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the fact you've kept mostly the original body line. Have you changed the design of the car at all? I'm trying to, I can't tell. Uh, we tried to keep a little bit of the original proportion and silhouette mm -hmm. of the car. So we like to build upon what Dodge created, which was a great foundation, and just draw people in with the detail. But the overall architecture and the silhouette is remain the same. There's a few functional aspects that we changed, but overall, you know, it's not overly stylized with scoops or anything right. like that. Yeah, it's very much, we try to keep to, you know, true to what Dodge did. That's what I like. And it's amazing what a big car this is. Yeah, yeah. You know, compared to modern cars. Now, modern cars have gotten taller and wider, but mm -hmm. not, there aren't many this long. And it's, uh, it's a great looking, uh, I always love this design. Yeah. I mean, I liked the 66 uh, Charger when it came out, mm -hmm. which is just a coronet with a fastback roof on it. But, right. But this, when it came out, I guess it debuted in 68 was the first year That's of this great. body style. Yeah. It really knocked people's socks off. And uh, this is the car all the bad guys drive, <laughs> isn't it? And, yeah, this is the getaway car. In bullet this is, and, yeah. Yeah, this is the car uh, the bad guy can leave the keys in and nobody's going to steal yeah. it. <laughs> that was my favorite scene in Bullet when the hit man, he puts the seatbelt on and goes, it's like the loudest click. I've, yeah. That probably got more kids to wear seatbelts than any other thing. Just <laughs> when they realize Steve McQueen's behind him, he goes, <laughs> and he, you know what he means business now. Yeah. And the other guy cocks his shotgun. Very cool. That's Very cool. cool. Yeah. So, okay. Now, carbon fiber fenders, is that correct? Correct, yeah. The whole car is um, from the firewall floor to all carbon fiber. So one wow. of the things we have is carbon fiber fenders, hood, and front bumper. Okay. And... Well, we'll get into the power plane, powertrain a bit mm -hmm. later. Let's discuss the, the, the body style. So how much work is involved here? Do you take the mold from the original fenders to build the carbon fiber? Is that how it works? Yeah, we start with the original molds from mm -hmm. that, and um, that was on the fender aspect of it. But on the hood, we created and fabbed a whole new hood and plug. Okay. Yeah, and so I mean, you can see we, we raised it a little bit more for clearance and functional aspects of that, but we... Uh, in some aspects, we keep it with the originals, and in some aspects, we change it when needed. Now, when you make something carbon fiber like this, from, do you get original factory mold, or do you just take the original fender off the car and use that as your prototype? Yeah, we, um, we take the original fender off and use it as our prototype for okay. our plug. Okay, yeah. very cool. Well, I mean, and I like the way you've... So it's just carbon fiber with clear over it. Is that what we have here? It's uh, straight carbon fiber pre-preg. And uh, interesting story on the fenders. Um, you know, we wanted to keep the whole, the original thought was to keep them the whole front end carbon, just mm -hmm. so it would be black and then gray. And then I wanted to do the whole car black, but we, for the business case, we wanted to illustrate our capabilities in carbon, so we wanted to make that evident too. So we kind of brainstormed between me and Dave and the painter at work, and we came up with the idea of fading it. So it would kind of gracefully go from black to uh, carbon. So you'd get the carbon look up front and very subtle. I, 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 boy, it is subtle, because I, I, yeah. I didn't really notice it until you said it Very right subtle, now. yeah. Yeah, very nice. Because usually SEMA is not about subtle. No. <laughs> you know, that's what I like. But see, yeah. that's the Wisconsin roots. You know, yeah. We don't want to make too much noise. They'll just keep it a bit. <laughs> but nicely, <laughs> nicely subtle it is now. And you got, uh, obviously, carbon fiber here. Correct. Yeah, we like to bounce in. So did you guys put in your own, what they call it, autoclave? Is that what they call it? To do, the car do you do the carbon fiber on Yeah, we, ha we do have uh, carbon fiber in-house in at Speedcore, and that is you know, part of what we do. A large portion of what we do is carbon fiber parts and accessories for this era of cars. And that seems to be the coming thing, isn't it? The guys with the old English wheel and all that, Great. that's kind of going out the back, and carbon fiber is the new... Yeah. Aluminum, I guess you'd call it almost. It, absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of those guys, too, at the Plenishing Hammer and the English Wheel, but we also like to keep it up to date and balance things out with carbon fiber technology as well. Have we reached the point where carbon fiber is actually more cost-effective and cheaper 
than doing aluminum? Or uh, aluminum still have an edge? Um, I think aluminum still has its place, but yeah. carbon fiber, I mean, as you know, in terms of in the past 15, 20 years, has gotten a lot more economical than it has in terms of uh, cost and manufacturing and yeah. accessibility than it was 20 years ago. So I think, you know, with these cars, we're making, trying to go, go fast, stop fast, and carbon fiber complements that in a functional yeah. aspect. And it looks good. I know, know on, the, on the F1 McLaren, when that was developed in the early 90s, it was 2,000 hours to do the carbon fiber tub. The P1 McLaren, it's four hours to exactly. do the carbon So I mean, yeah, yeah just, yeah. just uh, you know, one generation or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's, so uh, that, we saw the front of the car. Let's move to the, what have we done differently back here? Obviously, we've blacked out the bumper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is that carbon fiber as well? Was that an actual? Yep. No, that's, that's all real carbon fiber okay. on the rear bumper as well. And we incorporated the late model um, Challenger taillight out of a late model Challenger. Oh, right, right, very right. nice. And then uh, to kind of get it more better integration, we uh, CNC'd and plasma cut a uh, bezel for okay. the rear to kind of complement that nicely. Right. And of course, we got our custom badge in the rear. Right, yeah. right. And the word well, bumper, really, it's just not a bumper anymore. <laughs> Anybody bumps that, you're going to talk to the yeah. insurance company. Yeah. Okay, is this, this is still a filler? Yep, okay. yeah. And again, you know, kind of going with the original theme, we just modernized and cleaned up the original look, but that's a one off custom, nice detail. Now, all this, I'm trying to, this is all stock, right? This whole piece. That's stock, yeah. They were known for having that kind of flying buttress look. Off right, the back. right. Yeah. This piece, this stock piece of glass? Flush, custom glass. Okay, yeah, that's, what, that's yeah. what it is. That's yeah. what it's, okay. Yeah. Flush, okay. And so, obviously, the only way to open the trunk is there's no key, it's internal, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. 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 Wow. And I love the uh, wet, dry, shop vac looking uh, exhaust here. It looks like when you spill water, you just put that extension on, you scoop up all of it. It's funny. It's nicely done Thank and you. nicely integrated there. I like the way it's uh, rather than just the two yeah, round yeah. exhaust pipes coming out. It centers it pretty nicely. Yeah, I hadn't seen that before. That looks great. Thank that you. looks great. Thank you. What black is that? Uh, that's just PPG straight black. Oh, yeah. it is? Okay. Yeah, that's a black that we did. Very cool. Now you style the interior as well? Correct, that's correct, yeah. And so all the interior and quarter panels, inner quarter panels are all carbon. And the entire interior is custom made by uh, Gabe's yeah. upholstery in San Bernardino. Oh, and I love the nod to uh, the 60s with the, with the pistol grip exactly. shifter. It's one yeah. of those key elements you have to keep. With yeah, the you DNA have to have car. that. I right. remember that was like, that was how, that my, my uh, challengers got that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like you shift in a tractor or something. So you sent the car all the way to California to do the interior, huh? Correct, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we work with Gabe's upholstery for our interiors. All right, there you go. Well, it looks like, I can't wait to drive it. It looks like a proper, comfortable car. It is. With real seats, and you can actually take four people and full roll cage. How about the gauges? Tell me about that. What do we have there? Those were custom that we did with a classic design. And, of course, they, you know, they do a great job, and they just do nice detailing around the beveling and the bezels as well but the graphics and everything we worked with them on now that. i don't yeah. see any sound system is there one in this uh the sound system's in the motor <laughs> oh okay oh, okay so. yeah no so we like to have the engine do the uh symphony yeah there you go yeah. works for me yeah well let's let's bring in dave our uh, our our engine builder here dave how are you good Jay. good to see you good to see you so tell me the challenges here we should tell people this does not have the chrysler motor you know we did a uh we had a Mustang here a while back that the Ring Brothers did that had a Chevy engine. Right hey, dear Mr. Little, I will never watch your show. <laughs> Just people furious, you know. People get all upset, you know. So tell us about the motor here. What do we have? So we have a Mercury Marine offshore racing engine. Okay. Nine liters. Wow. Okay. 552 cubic inch with two 94 millimeter turbos. Wow. Now that is purpose built, obviously, for... Offshore racing. Okay. Yeah. And this is the first streetcar with this engine that Speedcore uh, integrated into here. Now, th the challenges of taking a uh, an engine like that, which is obviously bringing in obviously just cool water continuously from yeah. from a lake or something. A any <clears throat> any challenges in terms of cooling it in this application with what six gallons, five gallons of coolant? Yeah, we have an oversized radiator, because you're right, boats take it from the lake. The right. lake is their radiator. Right. On this, yeah, we definitely had to make sure air is going to be shooting through there and oversized radiator. Is this an engine that anybody could buy, a crate motor that you could buy, or is it? Uh... I think eventually it will be, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And I know that uh, Mercury does offer it. Oh, and, I see. And um, okay. we're the systems integrator. Okay. 
So obviously not used to being hooked to a transmission or anything of that nature, is it? Yes, so we are using a Tremec T56, and it is the same bolt pattern, So, and it's a bowler built okay. one to handle the horsepower. Is that a six-speed or five-speed? Six-speed. Okay. You know, the Tremecs are unbelievable. I mean, uh, from the smallest amount of horsepower to the biggest amount of horsepower, you can't break these. Oh, they're, great. they're really terrific. They're really terrific transmissions. They shift nicely. And they're really standard equipment with most manufacturers now, aren't they? Okay. Can we open the hood and see what we got here? Yeah, I'd love to. You got to have the hood pins. Yep. <clears throat> and these are actually 3D printed, by the way, instead of most people are using billet ones. Okay. So. Just, uh, oh, oh got to press the button. Beautiful. There we go. Yep. Wow, look how light that hood is. Yeah. Boy, it's a nice looking motor, isn't it? Yep. Do you get turbo lag with this? Uh, Purposefully, because uh, when the turbos come on, you know, it's about a two second delay, right. and there's just a lot of power. So when we were test driving, doing 80, we put it down, two second delay, and it was spinning the rear tires. So. Yeah, so you step down and kick one, two, boom, and there you go. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'll, but are they sequential? They both come out at the same time, or does one? Yeah, they got an ECU that programs that. Okay, yep. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's, that, that's a... Yeah, a lot of fab work into this, and uh, we got a great fabrication department, and uh, man. What is hours. this, in canal? Uh, it's actually stainless. Oh, and, it is? Oh, stainless, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, they were about this red when we had it on the dyno, yeah. and it uh, really did well. But no discoloration or anything. I mean, obviously, it's tuned very nicely. Right? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. And you've got your intercooler in front of the radiator. That doesn't cause you any heating problems? No, and it's air to air, and um, yeah, we haven't had any issues. So actually, it runs pretty cool. That's the biggest intercooler I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, look, it's just almost as thick. How many gallon radiator is it? Boy, I'm not sure, but it's thirsty. That's yeah, right. yeah. Now, do you run coolant, or do you run like an Evans cool? Do you, what do you? Dex cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice looking motor. And these just primarily for offshore powerboat, huh? Yeah. It so doesn't it seem like there would be enough of a market. Are there that many offshore power? <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you build an engine, you want to build thousands. Yes. You know, it seems funny to me that uh, you put all this effort into designing an engine just for that application. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're, I don't know what the market is for that, but, um, you know, with this engine, we want to be different, unique, and yeah. that's why we needed a really big car and uh, something to use it in. A lot of guys frown on, oh, you put a Chevy engine in a Ford or maybe you right. did something else, but we're just using a boat engine and uh, that can be used on anything and it's not crossing the line. Did you ever consider going normally aspirated without the turbos? We were thinking about doing a supercharged version as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, and we got a couple more in the works. But you like the turbo better? Yeah, yeah, it's proven. And uh, offshore racing is full throttle all the time, and they're going across the yeah. lake or whatever. And uh, it really takes abuse. I mean, you can't blow these engines. What did you say, 9 liter? What's that, about 5? 552. 552, wow. Yeah, a lot of cubes. Boy, that is. It's a big one. God, this carbon fiber is so... It's amazing. Oh, it's, yeah, it's not only the present, it's the future. Yeah. And carbon is just great to work with. And obviously, you lose a lot of weight off the front end. There's no bumper here either. Yep, yep. Just five layers of carbon here. And uh, we got a full uh, billet aluminum grill that we uh, custom made, CNC'd, and uh, two piece 6061 aluminum. How about brakes? What are you using for brakes? Uh, we are using the Bear Six Pistons. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, great brake. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have an, obviously this motor, you probably don't have to worry about ECU and anti-lock brake is not hooked up to the motor. The, That's it, correct. It's a, so actually that makes it a little easier, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot easier. Because yeah. you just, you know, we've been uh, doing Bernard's, he races a motorcycle sidecar, the Yamaha, huh? and, and the wiring harness, you know, we, ha we had to add an inch to reach, it just screwed everything Really? Up. Yeah. Wow. Just, adding a little bit more wire to the wiring harness just to make connect. Oh, throws everything out of whack and, you know, it's not reading the anti-lock brakes and it's not the traction control. So with this, you can just set it up like it's yes. 1960 again. You put a motor in and it's independent of all the other stuff. Correct. Yeah. Very clean, very simple. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess that's one of the advantages of using, you know, a crate engine like that is you don't have to deal with all the computers. You know, I so many, <laughs> even my little Shogun over there, I thought, Oh, the brake light went out. Let me flick the brake light switch. There is no brake light switch anymore. <laughs> it goes through the, you know, it's pretty crazy. Well, very good. Can we uh, take it for a spin? I'd love to. Ooh, yeah. yeah. How many horsepower? 1650, and we want you to use all of it. 1650. Well, yeah, we'll try to be judicious. Okay, before we take it for a ride, can we 
put it up on our sterile coney lift here. These are pretty cool. They're all wireless. Good day, Mr. Bond. The cool thing is when they come down, they regen. They really? They put power back in, yeah. Wow. But you can lift 40,000 pounds. We put the bus on here and wow. trucks. And That's really good. Oh, good heavens. Couldn't be more sanitary under here. <laughs> so, yeah, we made all the frame rails. Look at this. Boy. Yep, floors are all handmade, and yeah. uh, English wheel, and uh, lead roller. So, traction bars here. Huh? Looks like we got a little bit of something coming off there. Yeah, a little bit of grease coming off of there. What are we looking at? Is that? Yeah, uh, there's the uh, oil coming from. This is where you fill it. So oh, okay. It's coming out of there. Got a breather. Yep. This is the breather. Coming off yeah. top of the breather. Okay. Yep. That's yep. Not yep. Bad. Custom made gas tank. Yep. Stainless. Oh, yep. stainless, huh? Yeah. Wow. What do we got here? So a dry sump. Oh, then, oh, the dry sump, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, the dry sump's all the way back here. Wow. Yeah. So then we took the oil lines and then welded them through. Each. Oh, look at so that. These are all through there. And yeah. The oil line is welded on there, huh? Yeah. So they're through everything, and then we came back and welded on so each. So obviously you don't get any chassis flex there, or else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what rear end? What what number? Three fifty fours. Oh, three seventy threes. Oh, three seventy threes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, with a six speed, I guess. Yeah, it's good all-around gear that we use. Yeah. So, well, around. as you can see, the level of workmanship here is as nice in the bottom as it is on the top. So, yeah, uh, three-inch stainless exhaust. Yeah, um, you know these are great. Control the vibration, then we can solid mount the exhaust. Right. So, yeah, a lot of oil, obviously for. Uh, I mean, the dry sump, you know, obviously you need a deep pan touching the ground. and Yeah, that helped out a lot because we nice shoved the motor back so far. Yeah, the nice thing is you're just about even with the cross member here, so you're not going to yeah, rip yeah. the pan out. Yeah. And you got some insulation on here. Yeah, it gets warm, especially coming off those turbos. So, and we're running your, three fans. This is your cold air intake through here? Yep, yep. And what do we go to, a headlight? No, all right, all right up here. Oh, I see. Yep, right up there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. Looks pretty good. Let's take it for a ride. Muscle cars in the 60s don't come anywhere near what muscle cars can do today. I mean, it's a 
mean, you, if, if this had the original Hemi in it, we'd be getting blown off by Volkswagen GTI. You know? <laughs> and suspension and brakes is where they really come along. Yeah. I mean, it's by no means a sports car, but you can flick it around pretty nicely. Oh, yeah. It's very predictable. The trickiest part is really dealing with the turbo, when that's going to kick in and tear the rear tires loose, you know? Yep, yep. It would be interesting to compare the supercharged version, the exact same car with the turbocharged yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. That supercharge is going to deliver it yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm somewhat reticent to, to, to nail it with these turbos, because I'm, I'm going to, you know, especially on a road like this, you're going to, you're going to lose it. It's a very mechanical engine, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. They really hold the abuse. They'll put three of these in an offshore racing. Wow. Yeah. And what do they have for suspension? What are the shocks? Uh, Penske. Great oh, shock. Okay. Yeah. Double adjustable. We've got a four link in the rear and uh, uh, adjustable remotely. You have to get into the car. Get into the car. You yeah. have to turn it up. But yeah, great. Great shot. I mean, handles better than any charger I've ever driven. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, it's interesting. This thing's got 1,650 horsepower and probably, what, 13 or 1,400 on pump gas? That's right, like that? 1,350. Okay. All right, so, and those turbos are tricky. I'm not going to do the burnout justice, so let's have the guy who actually built the car do the burnout. Let's, let's see how it goes. Ready to give it a shot? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, that would meet the legal definition of a burnout. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>